We are very hard at work at our data-oriented technology stack. It consists of the C-sharp job system that we shipped last year, the burst compiler, and the entity component system. Now, the most unconventional piece of that stack is definitely the burst compiler, because it takes C-sharp code and turns it into assembly code. Now, you wouldn't quite think that C-sharp would be the most obvious choice to write the low-level parts of your game engine in. But what makes Burst work is that we don't use all of the features of C-sharp. We take out things like the garbage collector, like reflection, and we don't allow any virtual calls in your job code. And what Burst does is it takes programs written in that subset of C-sharp and turns it into highly optimized assembly code. Take a look here. This is an image of the Burst Inspector. I love everything about this image. <laughs> I do. I love the Burst Inspector. Here on the left is a list of all the jobs in this project. I selected my simple calling job. A calling job, that is the inner loop of our calling code of the renderer. If calling is not fast, we could all go home. It has to be fast. And here on the right side, you see the machine instructions that the Burst compiler generated, interleaved with the original C-sharp code, the source code of that job. So if you're the kind of developer that really wants to get down to the metal and really understand exactly what is going on, you want to understand what the compiler does, why it does it, and you want to verify if it did a good job, no pun intended, <laughs> You can take a look here, and you can see that it actually did do a good job. These specific machine instructions, they're vectorized. So they operate on four calling planes at the same time. The Burst compiler is going out of preview with Unity 2019.1, and we have a Burst 1.0 release candidate available for you today. Now, before you all run out and go download it, <laughs> I see a few people hanging onto their seats. Um, we're going to have the person who started this whole data-oriented tech stack initiative at Unity. We're going to have him take it for a spin. Here we go. What is your name, and what is your relationship to the founding of Unity? Uh, well, my name is Joachim. Um, and um, my relate well, uh, well, I founded it <laughs> together with uh, two other guys. I knew I wanted to make computer games. I didn't really pay that much attention to high school. Um, I mean, that, that was not that was not what my parents wanted for me for sure. <laughs> Back in the day, most game engines were just sort of like a bunch of source code that you had to compile and then you could make a game out of it. There wasn't really that many good options back then. We basically said, OK, we want to eventually ship a game engine, a tool with which you can make computer games. The reason we wanted to do that is because it felt like what we had actually built to make these, these types of games was actually really flexible and really easy to use. And we just wanted to make something that's really affordable so that, you know, like for people that, that were like us. We built Unity on, on, uh, on that collaboration with those customers. Making a game is, is hard. It's hard work. I really want to see this transition to, to making Unity the absolute most performant engine and enabling people to make games that have amazing performance, that look beautiful, but making it easy to do that. The dream version of Unity is that we stick to our values. It's just about being there for our community that we always listen to what they need and then build exactly that. Do you think you will work on Unity for the rest of your life? I think so. I just really love making game engines. I'm having just a blast these days actually just doing that. So I don't see why not.
thank you. A couple of months ago at Unite, we showed the Mega City demo. And it's been really important for us to stress test the data oriented tech stack, proving that we can stream, simulate, and render massive amounts of content in a dynamic world. Let's check it out. So today, we're releasing the Mega City project. Let's see what is included. I'm going to go to an editor demo. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to open up the Mega City scene here so we can check it out. And in this scene, we have 4.5 million renderers. And they're all getting loaded in the background in the editor. And that's, of course, important because we love great runtime performance, but it's equally important that workflows are efficient when you're working particularly in such big scenes. Check out all of this detail here that we have just hanging around everywhere in the mega city. And all of these buildings, every single one, is made of around 200,000 separate entities. You can really see how crazy that looks when just flying up these buildings, because that detail is just not on the level of the camera. It's just everywhere. Now, when I click on that uh, building, I can select it, and I can just uh, click on Edit here. And when I do that, I can use the subscene feature to get back to a very familiar object representation. Here we have our game objects. I can move them around. I have my transform component, my lot groups, my mono behavior. I can move them around and change whatever I like. And I can do that in the context of the whole world. And then I can select um, some of these shacks. And the mega city, the building block of it, is really these nested prefabs. You can see here. This, um, this prefab of these shacks, it is made out of further smaller pieces and different variants put together. And that was really important for us to actually be able to build um, this kind of scene with this massive amount of content, because we, we had two artists working on it for just a couple of weeks. Now, when I'm done editing, I can just close the scene, I can save it, and what you see then is we are saving the scene to disk, the game objects, but we're also saving the entity optimized representation. And we can actually load and unload the different parts, um, these different sections. So here you can see the low resolution detail with just a couple of renderers just representing the shell of the building. But then when I load the rest of the scene in, I can, I can do that for streaming, just getting more detail when I'm close up um, and in the distance you have the shell. But look at how fast that loads. That is the power of a runtime-ready data format. Now, everything that you have just seen, including the content, the game code, and the tools, is available today.